Nathaniel, but I go by <coughs> Nate. Um, some of the people at the school call me Mr. Frogman, things like that. But you can call me whatever you'd like. Uh, but like he said, I will be um, asking or have a time where you guys can ask questions at the end. Feel free to ask what you feel uh, is appropriate. I might not answer certain questions if I feel like you're goofing off or trying to be funny, okay? Uh, the one thing I do ask though is if I do take out any animals, um, which I will be at the very end being taken out one animal, that you guys don't get uber loud and excited, okay? I know it's exciting when you see reptiles and different animals out, but the animal I might bring out might get a little skittish, okay? So he might jump a little bit on me, but I assure you he cannot hurt you. Nothing bad will happen like that, okay? So how many of you guys are afraid of reptiles and amphibians? Wow. Oh, one person. Wow. Okay, well, thank you for being honest. Most people are very scared of reptiles and amphibians. What did I bring today? A reptile or an amphibian? Just by seeing what you see in the tanks. Go ahead and shout out some answers. Amphibian. Amphibian. Good job, guys. Yeah, I brought some poison dart frogs, okay? So today that's what we'll be talking about mostly is frogs and poison dart frogs in particular, okay? Now, poison dart frogs are an amphibian. Does anybody know what amphibian really means? Sort of, okay. So amphibian literally means in Greek both kinds. And they differ from reptiles in that they have many different lives, or two different lives if you want to put it that way. Reptiles are always the same way they come out. When they come out of an egg, they're always a snake, like let's say snakes, turtles, uh, lizards. Those are all reptiles, okay? When they come out of an egg or they come out of their mother, they're already a lizard, a snake, or a turtle. When amphibians are laid, they're laid in three different stages they go through. The first stage they go through is called the egg stage, okay? Like this, this is what frogs look like when they first are put down, the mother lays these eggs, okay? After a couple of weeks, they then turn into the second part of the stage, which is the tadpole. Okay, these are still in the egg sac. So this is the big differentiation between reptiles and amphibians. They're, they're tadpoles right now. So after they're tadpole, they're in a tadpole state for, the poison dart frogs in particular, are in the tadpole state for at least a couple months, so about two to three months, okay? Now after that, they turn into little froglets. And I actually brought different types of frogs, uh, poison dart frogs. There's many different types of dart frogs. And I just want to show you the little tiny froglets I got in here. Uh, they're about the size of your thumbnail. If you put your thumbnail up, that's about the size they are when they come out uh, as a little baby froglet. And as you can see, they get to be about that big, th these types in particular, okay? So they grow a lot, but this is the final stage you go through, okay? So that's the difference between reptiles and amphibians is they go through different stages. They're not frogs their entire life. They're a tadpole for a big part of the life. And sometimes the tadpoles don't survive in the wild. So that's a big difference, okay? So the other thing I want to talk about, just starting off, is the name poison dart frogs. Anybody know how poison dart frog, the name came about? Because they can poison Right, yeah. Actually, these frogs come from South America. Uh, all, all of the dart frogs in, in the dart frog family, all of that genus, they all come from South America, South and Central America, so it's very close to Central America. So that's where they originally come from. The poison dart frog name comes from a country called Colombia, which is actually in South America. And it comes from one particular frog that started the name poison dart frog. And the reason why is just like this uh, young man said over here, that the Indian tribes over there, these, these are people that live in the jungle, they live in the rainforest off the land. They don't have iPods, they don't have TV, they don't have anything like that, they live off the land. So, the men typically have to go out and have to hunt. And so what they've developed is they, they found that the poison dart frog has a toxin on its back. So what they do is they rub a dart on it, and then they use a blow gun and they kill their, their prey like that. So that's how that name came about, poison dart frog. Now the name poison dart frog is very scary when I tell people that and I do presentations because they think automatically these are poisonous. And I can assure you none of my frogs are poisonous in my collection. And I'll get into that a little bit here. So the name poison dart frog uh, came about through that. It kind of just trickled down through all the other dart frogs. And not all dart frogs are poisonous to humans, OK? There's only three types of dart frogs that are poisonous to humans. And I brought some of them right now. This frog right here and this frog right here are the most poisonous. That's the most poisonous vertebrate in the world. So you have snakes and stuff like that, cobras, mambas, things like that are very venomous. These two frogs right here are way more deadly than those snakes, okay? All it takes is one little drop of their poison on their back, okay? Now, this frog right here, the Phyllobate cerebellus, that's the one I'm talking about, is the true poison dart frog, and that's this right here, okay? This guy is the, we call him like the king of the dart frog world, okay? He's not scared of anything because in the wild they know that nobody can hurt them except for humans, we can kill them. 
but they don't have any real natural predators because everyone knows if I mess with that, I'm going to die. If I eat that frog, I'm going to die. Okay? So it's a very scary thing for other animals when they see these bright colors. As you can see, these guys are white, but there's ones on, on here that are a teal blue and stuff like that. Those are a warning to other predators. Stay away from me. If you eat me, you're not going to feel very good and you could die. Okay? So it's a pretty good uh, defense mechanism that it has. Uh, so have any of you guys ever seen dart frogs before? Like in pet shops or anything like that? Yeah? You seen them before? Yeah. What, what kind of frog, what color frog did you usually see? Yeah, you saw some yellow ones? Yeah. So the typical frogs that are around here in North America or the United States where we have, we don't have ones that are really brightly colored blues and stuff like that. We have the greens and the browns. It's kind of a boring type of frog, okay? There are some poison dart frogs that are a little bit uh, boring color, but poison dart frogs are really cool because they have so many different colors. You have reds, you have oranges, you have purples, you have blue, you have white, all sorts of different colors, and all different patterns as you can see. This is one type of frog, okay? So it's called Dendrobates tinctorius, and these are all different morphs. These are all the same like family of frogs, but they have different morphs. They all look very different. Kind of like how we are. We have people that have brown skin, we have people that have white skin, we have people that have darker skin. Uh, that's, that's kind of like what these guys are. They have different patterns and different colors that they, they have, okay? These guys are all from a country called Suriname, okay? So all these poison dart frogs naturally come from South America, but slowly but surely, people are bringing them over to the United States, and then, believe it or not, in some states they are surviving, um, such as Hawaii and Florida. People bring them over, and they're actually in the wild now. Um, now, these frogs that are brought over typically aren't necessarily uh, poisonous. They're usually captive bred, and then they just survive in the wild, so there's no worry about having poisons going around and people getting hurt from that, okay? So I'll show you what, remember I talked about the uh, the, uh, the tribes over in Colombia that collect the poison dart frog? So I brought some pictures to show you what they do. So this is the first thing. If you can see, there's no hands being touched on those frogs, right? They're all being caught in a, like, a little basket. Those are, those are this type of frog right here, but the yellow form. Okay, so they catch them in that basket right there. And then here's what they do. That's the exact way they do it. They just rub a little dart on there. Everybody see that? Yeah. That dart will stay poisonous and have that poison on it for about a year. So that poison lasts a pretty, pretty long time. Okay. So I guess I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the care that I, that I take for these. Because some people might be interested in getting into frogs or snakes and things like that. Some people want to know how you care for the frogs. And poison dart frogs are really easy to take care of. You know, I think they're really hard because they're an exotic animal. Um, not too many people have them, but they're really, really easy. They're like a lot like taking care of fish. Okay, you have to keep it really humid, and where they come from down in South America is very, very humid. Okay, and I don't know if you guys know what humidity is. You guys heard that? What that means? Shout out something. Think. What do you guys know about? Moist, like moisture in the air, right? Sometimes it gets humid here, and sometimes it's really dry. Well, the important thing is, poison dart frogs are very sensitive. Their skin is extremely sensitive, and that's another thing with amphibians is they have to stay wet. So they're usually near water, okay? These guys are typically always in moisture. If they're out, if I take them out and put them on the carpet, in about five minutes they'll be dead. That's how quick it is. They can't survive outside of a non-humid environment. So that's a really big thing. As you see, there's lots of plants in there. Um, I have a light on here. This, this actually is not putting out any heat at all. It's just putting out uh, the UVB rays for the plants and stuff like that. But there's no heat requirements. These guys live at 70 degrees, kind of like how we are. We feel comfortable in our house. That's how these guys are. They're very easy to keep in that sense. And what I feed them, I'll talk about what I feed them, which is, actually takes me back to um, how they get their poison. Does anybody know how they get their poison? Shout out some answers. I'm not going to call my brother because he already knows. <laughs> what they eat? Yeah, that's actually right. Some people think that they're actually born with the, the poison already in their skin. And that's the big myth is that they don't produce that toxin like snakes do. You know, some mambas or king cobras, they're born, they have that poison or the venom inside them, and then they have that the whole life. Poison dart frogs don't, and that's, that's what happens when they bring them into captivity. They lose that toxin after quite a while because of their diet. So some things that they eat in the wild are like ants, crickets, uh, termites, things like that. Now these termites or these ants, um, it's suggested, uh, scientists have kind of figured that what they eat is a type of plant. These, these other insects eat the plant, and that plant has these toxins in it. So then that insect gets that toxin in its body, and the frog eats that insect, and guess what? It's now in the frog's body. And that's, that's kind of like a little a cycle there. So once you take it out of the wild and put it in captivity, you cut off that diet. And I feed them things like fruit flies. 